Over the years, the U.S. had several conflicts across the seas. We have seen the Humvees, heavy armored trucks, MRAPs, and the M1 Abrams battle tanks across several battlefields. But how do they even get there in the first place, at times in just a few hours' notice? It is very unlikely they have factories out there in the battlefield. Could the answer be skydiving Humvees and airdropping tanks? Well, stick with us as we show you the expensive military transport planes of the USA that makes this possible. The USA has a separate major command which is dedicated towards airlifting, which is called Air Mobility Command. But this wasn't the first of its kind. On the 1st of January 1966, the U.S. established the Military Aircraft Command with its headquarters at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. Later on, the Tactical Air Command was merged with the Military Airlift Command in 1974. The MAC was established during the Vietnam era and was involved in several missions along the way. And at the end of the Cold War, the Air Force would reorganize its command structure and the MAC would be inactivated on the 1st of June 1992. Almost all of the personnel and equipment were transferred to the Air Mobility Command which runs things today. The AMC has a total force personnel of over 100,000. Some of the vehicles that the AMC operates are the C-5M Super Galaxy, KC-46A Pegasus, C-17 Globemaster III, C-130 Hercules, and KC-135 Stratotanker. While all of these aircrafts are beasts of its own, two of these stand out. Let's start with the Lockheed C-5M Super Galaxy. Now, the C-5M Super Galaxy is not a new aircraft, but rather it is an upgraded and modernized version of the C-5 Galaxy. This aircraft right here is the largest aircraft strategic airlifter for the Air Force. The C-5 has five sets of landing gear and 28 wheels. The C-5 has a wingspan of 222 feet and 9 inches, with a length of 247 feet 10 inches and a height of 65 feet and 1 inch. And to power a mammoth like this, you would definitely need a few engines, and it does. The original C-5 had four TF-39 turbofan engines, which are made by General Electric. The C-5M uses the newer and more advanced F-138 GE-100 General Electric engines. Each of these engines could create a thrust of 51,250 pounds. Being the largest airlifter for the U.S. Air Force definitely sounds cool, but what exactly is it capable of? The C-5M is capable of carrying a cargo load of 281,000 pounds, which is around 127,460 kg. It can fly this load for 2,150 nautical miles, offload and then go on another trip, flying to a second base which could be up to 500 nautical miles away from the first destination. And yes, if you guys have been wondering, all of this is done without refueling. If aerial refueling is possible, then this aircraft has no limits to its range. The range would then only be a matter of how long the crew would be able to hold up. The crew usually includes a pilot, co-pilot, two flight engineers, and three loadmasters. Without cargo, this aircraft could travel for nearly 7,000 nautical miles, and it can go as fast as speeds over 500 miles per hour. The C-5M is capable of lifting two M1 Abrams tanks. An Abram tank is 9 meters long, 4 meters wide, and weighs around 73 tons. That is definitely heavy. The C-5 is unique in the sense that it has cargo ramps in the front and the rear, with the front being more iconic. The front of the C-5 has a specialized nose cone, which can be opened and shut fairly quickly. There is also a kneeling landing gear system, which enables the parked aircraft to lower itself to a height which makes drive-on, drive-off vehicle loading possible. The cargo floor is also adjusted to a standard truck bed height to make loading and unloading much easier and quicker. The C-5 doesn't need really long runways. In fact, it's one of its characteristics that makes it stand apart from the rest. The C-5 can take off and land on runways that are just 6,000 feet long. The first C-5 was introduced to service in June 1970. Yep, you heard that right. This aircraft has been in the service for over 50 years and still remains the go-to airlifter for the U.S. The C-5 has seen the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, and the conflicts in Yugoslavia and Afghanistan. While its design did contribute to longevity, the C-5 does undergo modernization. The Reliability Enhancement and Re-Engineering Program was initiated in 2006. This would include newer engines, power units, upgrades to aircraft frame, landing gear, and so on. This resulted in a huge improvement as the newer engines could produce 22% more thrust. What this translates to on the field is that the takeoff distance has been reduced by 30%. 
There is a 58% faster climb rate, an increase in the cargo load, and a much longer range. At the same time, the C5 fleet has become much quieter and is now more reliable and easier for maintenance. As of today, 131 of the C5s were built. The upgraded version of the C5, the C5M Super Galaxy, is expected to have a service life up to 2040 and beyond with upgrades to its engines and avionics. While it has been of significant importance during wars, it has also been used for unconventional purposes. The C5s were used to carry the F-117 Nighthawks during its development to keep things secretive, leaving no signs of what the cargo could be. The C5s were also used to supply relief aid and supplies to areas that faced natural disasters or crises. Now let's take a look at an aircraft that flies much closer to the action, the Boeing C-17 Globaster III. The C-17 is much smaller than the C-5, but at the same time, it is much more versatile. The C-17 can be used to perform tactical airlift and airdrop missions and is often used for aeromedical evacuation missions. The C-17 performs extremely well in maintaining an effective combat force close to a battle zone. The C-17 has a mission success probability rate of 92% and only needs 20 aircraft maintenance hours per flying hour. Boeing even has a warranty to assure that these figures will be met. As for the dimensions, the C-17 is 173 feet long with a wingspan of 169 feet 10 inches and is 174 feet tall. Powering the Globemaster are four Pratt & Whitney F-117 PW100 turbofan engines, each of which can produce 40,440 pounds. They are equipped with thrust reversers to direct the flow of air upward and forward to prevent dust and debris from entering the engine. The thrust reversers also make it possible to reverse the aircraft and can help to create drag for maximum rate descents. And just like the C-5, the C-17 also excels in taking off and landing in runways as short as 3,500 feet, despite carrying huge payloads. Even in runways that could be as narrow as 90 feet, the C-17 can do a full 180 using a three-point star turn. Speaking of payloads, the C-117 has a payload capacity of 170,000 pounds. It has a cargo space that is 88 feet long, 18 feet wide, and 12 feet tall. The C-17 can accommodate one M1 Abrams main battle tank. The cargo could be loaded through an aft ramp and door system, and if the payload is something you can't drive in, the Halverson loader comes in handy. The loader has a mechanized lift platform which can move 25,000 pounds of cargo at a single go. It can raise the cargo as high as 18 feet in the air and travel as fast as 17 miles per hour. The loader is so integral to rapid loading and unloading that there are special courses for learning how to drive the loader, and the Air Force even holds competitions to see who could load and unload the fastest. The C-17 can fly at speeds as high as 518 miles per hour at an altitude of 28,000 feet. Its service ceiling, on the other hand, goes as high as 45,000 feet at cruising speed. The C-17 was first deployed in 1993. It broke 22 records for oversized payloads and won the Collier Trophy the U.S. Aviation's most prestigious award in 1994. As of today, 157 of these are in active duty, 47 of these are in the Air National Guard, and 18 of these are in the Air Force Reserve. One of these would cost you $202.3 million in 1998. The coolest maneuver the C-17 performs could be the airdrop. Yep! Throughout its service, the C-17 has airdropped everything from paratroopers to Humvees, the cargo is pushed out of the rear door mid-flight, and the cargo has a parachute which will ensure that it will safely reach the ground. The C-17 even set a world record as it dropped an 85,000-pound test vehicle at a height of over 25,000 feet. Usually, the aircraft is operated by the crew members, which includes a pilot, co-pilot, and a loadmaster, but the crew could be modified as per the requirements of the situation. The C-17 is expected to remain in service as it is capable of meeting today's requirements with ease. These aircrafts may not be as flashy or as cool as fighter jets or stealth bombers, but they contribute a lot more to combat than we think they do. Which one of these aircrafts did you like more, the C-5 or the C-17? Do you have an even better idea of deploying vehicles and soldiers? Let us know in the comments below.